Virginia Elliot. 我的中文名字是艾珍。我在北部罗沃的预备学校当英文和中文老师。我对这两种语言的教书方法完全不同。我觉得原因是英文是我的母语，而中文不是。其实我觉得母语者和非母语者都可以成为好外语老师，重点是他们的教书能力，而不是他们的语言能力。Now, in English, my name is Gina Elia, and my Chinese name is Ai Zhen. I am a Chinese and English teacher at North Guard Preparatory School. My methods of teaching these two languages are entirely different. I think the reason is that English is my native language, while Chinese <coughs> is not. In fact, I think that both native speakers and non-native speakers can make great foreign language teachers. The important thing is their teaching ability, not their linguistic ability. In fact, I still remember well when this idea was first illuminated within me. I was a graduate student, and I was complaining to a fellow graduate student about a very bad Japanese teacher I had at the time. And specifically, I lamented that she wasn't a native speaker of Japanese. And he got a little upset, and he looked at me and asked me two questions, which became the million dollar questions, the sparks, so to speak that set me off on a years-long crusade to rethink the relationship between linguistic ability, nationality, and teaching ability, and to encourage others to do the same. He asked me, first of all, what difference does it make whether she's a native speaker of Japanese or not when it comes to assessing her teaching ability? And secondly, especially when it comes to global languages like English, French, and Spanish that have many second language speakers, how do you even decide who gets to count as a native speaker? He's right. In fact, this is a very thorny issue. And let me illustrate this to you by way of example. Consider for the moment that you are hiring for an English as a foreign language teaching position. Let's imagine this is the case. So this is a position where you are teaching English to non-native speakers, say in China. And let's say the basic requirement of the position is that your teacher be a native English speaker. Think about whether or not you would hire any of the following candidates for this job. Vladimir Nabokov is a very famous author, most well known perhaps for his English language novel, Lolita. He also was a professor of comparative literature at Cornell University for many years. However, his native language is Russian, this is the language in which he wrote his first nine novels. Would you consider him for this English teaching position, even though he isn't technically a native English speaker? Zhang Ailing, also known as Ailing Chan, she's a very famous Chinese author, wrote most of her literature, her fiction, and short stories in Chinese. However, she was bilingually educated in English and Chinese, she spent years in the United States. She even worked for the US government at one point. What about her? Would you consider her to meet the basic qualifications of this position? Lastly, Joseph Conrad. Joseph Conrad's native language was Polish. And in fact, English was his third language. It was in this third language that he wrote Heart of Darkness, which to this day is one of the most widely read and taught novels in English. So again, I ask you, if he walked into your interview room, would you seriously consider him for this English as a foreign language position that is open only to native speakers of English? So you can see that this becomes a thorny issue. How do we define who gets to count as a native speaker and not, in part, because of all of the immigrants and expats who spend so many years living in English-speaking regions of the world that their ability in the language grows to equal or even surpass that of people who were born and raised in those regions. And in fact, in fact, there are many more second language speakers of English than there are born native English speakers. This chart represents the three populations of the different kinds of English speakers that exist in the world. 
and that innermost circle represents those English speakers who were born in countries that have always predominantly spoken English, such as the USA, the UK, Australia, etc. So you can see that that population of English speakers is dwarfed by the two outer circles, the outer circle and the expanding circle there. So there are far more second language speakers of English than there are born native speakers. So when we make a decision as to who gets to count as a native speaker and who doesn't for a language like English, we're necessarily excluding lots of highly qualified teachers who speak English at fluent or native levels from being able to be included in that definition. Now you would think this is not a major problem. In your job ad, simply ask for a native level speaker rather than a native speaker. This tiny shift in language will shift the emphasis to the linguistic ability of your applicant rather than to their identity. However, in practice, this shift seems in large part not to have occurred. Before you, you see two real life sample job ads for English as a foreign language teaching positions in China. There are many more, I found them online. The one on the left explicitly states that it wants only native English speakers. The one on the right says that it wants native speaker level teachers only, which seems more inclusive until you consider that according to Chinese visa stipulations, if you want to come to China to teach English as a foreign language, you must be a citizen of one of the countries in that inner circle on the chart that I just showed you. So because of the Chinese nation's visa stipulations, only a very small subset of people in the world who speak English can come to that country, take on these jobs, and educate Chinese youth. And because of this, the nation of China, which provides many of the English as a foreign language teaching positions that are available to the world, is precluding many qualified teachers of English uh, who hail from all corners of the world from coming to their nation and uh, benefiting their youth. And this is a problem because, in fact, being a native speaker in any case is not correlated to being a great teacher. These are two separate skills that require different formations and different developmental processes. One can be a native English speaker. It doesn't mean that one will be a great teacher of English. Conversely, one can be a fantastic teacher of English without having to have reached a native level in that language. Once you have reached an intermediate or high intermediate level of proficiency in a language, your effectiveness in the classroom is going to be determined primarily by your teaching expertise and experience, not by your linguistic ability. This is my classroom in North Broward with both English and Chinese scrawled all over the whiteboard and the walls. I love that I get to teach both my native and my non-native languages here at North Broward. I especially feel that as a non-native teacher of Chinese, I bring a certain something to the table uh, that perhaps a native speaker would not. I can empathize with my students' learning process because I went through it myself. I can readily identify areas where they're going to have trouble because I had trouble with those areas when I was in their shoes. I know how to break the language down into digestible pieces for them to process more easily because that's how I learned it. And in these respects, I think I bring a perspective to learning Chinese that can be helpful for my students. At 22 years old, I criticized my then Japanese teacher for teaching her non-native language. Now, seven years later, I find myself making a living doing exactly the same thing that I criticized her for. <laughs> my thinking on this matter has come full circle. And I hope that today I can convince some of you to change your minds on this matter as well. At the very least, standing before my students at North Broward as a non-native Chinese teacher, I hope that I can encourage some of them to carry forth that spark of love for learning foreign languages that was first inculcated in me a long, long time ago. And I hope that seeing me standing before them, they will never be deterred by preconceived notions that only a limited, narrow subset of people can ever truly know a language like Mandarin Chinese well enough to say, for example, teach it. Thank you.